Welcome back to the Flying Scotsman FM channel and with a brand new experiment here. As you'll have seen from the thumbnail and from the intro video, we have moved Mbappe to Celtic and Haaland over to Rangers just to see who has the better career in Scotland, who can win the most trophies, who can score the most goals, both for their clubs and internationally. The idea is also to see if Mbappe and Haaland can bring their superstar status and help build Celtic and Rangers potentially to European trophy winners, whether it be Champions League, UEFA Cup or the Conference League. So what we'll hope that they will do is that their reputation will help build on the league as a whole, help grow the league, bring in some better players over the years and hopefully we will see a Scottish winner of a European trophy again. Now to do this, what well, the best thing to do is, as you can see here, I've got Mbappe on £20,000 a week. And I have also changed Erling Haaland's wage to £30,000 a week. Just because we don't want their massive wages crippling the clubs and then it'll just make, mean the experiment will kind of fail because both clubs will start failing FFP, you know, all the rigmarole that comes with that. So what we'll do now is we will take a look and see within five years how far both Haaland and Mbappe can take their respective clubs and see how far they can go in Europe. So we will now fast forward to the year 2027. Welcome back to the year 2027. What we'll do first is we will take a look and see who's won the league every year and see who's come second. Now, I'm going to guess that they have both finished first and second every year. I can't see them dropping any further than that. So as you can see, in the first year, Celtic have won the league with Rangers stuck coming some distance behind them. So that's 1-0 to Mbappe so far. Then the next year, Rangers have massively turned it around and have overtaken Celtic and won the title back off them. The year after that, Rangers again have won the league with an impressive 97 points, 14 points clear of Celtic that season. Now, third season, Celtic have won the league again with 103 points, only drawing one game away at Motherwell and then losing three games. It's only shown us two here, but... Dundee United and Livingston, both at home as well, they have lost, which is a bit of a surprise. And again, look at the distance here between second and third. And then for the most recent season, Rangers have again won the trophy, just five points clear of Celtic. So, you know, they've, Mbappe and Haaland have shared that trophy between them. What we'll now do as well is we will look at the Scottish Cup and see who has won this each season. So from the 22-23 season, as we can see, Celtic have dominated this cup. Four wins to Rangers, one. Although, our both came second in the Scottish Cup in the very first season. And I think we did see that they were also in the top flight the year after. So a very impressive season for our both. Nothing to do with this experiment as of yet. But our both getting promoted and coming runner-up in the Scottish Cup is a massive achievement for them. There you go. As we can see, Mbappe is already quite a bit ahead of Haaland in terms of total trophies won. But if you know anything about Scottish football, there is also the Scottish League Cup, if I can find it. Premier Sports Cup, it's called. There we are. So as you can see again, Motherwell won it in the first season, beating Rangers. That is a tough, tough time for them. Then Celtic won three in a row for St. Johnson, beat Rangers again. Rangers are not having a great time in the Cups. Only well, won the Scottish Cup once, and in the Premier Sports Cup, they have came runners-up twice. Neither time to Celtic, and Celtic have won the other three trophies. So Mbappe is flying in terms of that. So what we will do is we will now actually look and see. Mbappe is now the vice-captain, as well as the key player, which is understandable. Wouldn't expect anything less. And just looking here, you can see that out of 172 games, Mbappe has 117 goals for Celtic. That is quite incredible. Between him and, let's just look at Haaland, see how many goals he's got, if he's got the same amount of games, the same amount of goals. Erling Haaland, the exact same amount of goals, but on three games less. That is, that is quite, that's quite surreal, to be honest. The exact same amount of goals. Then, what we can also do is we will also look and see the award winners. And I'm assuming that they are going to just sweep up all of the awards. So, Player of the Year, Season 1, 
Haaland with Mbappe second, and then Mbappe's won four in a row. And as you can see, Haaland has came running up each time. Now we'll look at the player's player of the season. Again, Haaland wins it in the first season. And then Mbappe just with a clean sweep for the years going after. And then top goal scorer, Erling Haaland. Top goal scorer three times with 26 goals, 29 goals. Mbappe beats him to it in the third season with 26. Haaland's only 21 in the fourth season here for Mbappe. Wins it again. <clears throat> and we'll just have a quick look at Team of the Year. We will just scroll through it. Mbappe and Haaland are both there. Both in it again. Both in it again. I'd be very surprised if they're not in it every single season. Haaland and Mbappe again. Haaland and Mbappe once again. And then it'll go to all seasons. So in terms of the Premier League, you know, 117 and 117. The next closest is Macias on 19, so a fair, fair step up. What we'll do now is we will now jump forward another five years to take us to 10 years in the future. Just see if Mbappe is still holding those trophy, that trophy lead above Haaland or if Haaland's managed to close the gap. So we will see you in another five years. And welcome back to the year 2032, where we will take a look at the last five years and just see if Mbappe's managed to continue his dominance over Haaland in Scotland in terms of trophies won. As you can see, sixth season in and Mbappe's won the Premier League again. Impressive 96 points from Celtic, meaning they're 12 points clear of Rangers and Haaland here. Then I've just noticed Queen's Park, another Glasgow based club, are in the top flight. Impressive for them. I mean, they've massively held on to their top flight status there, so no problems at all. The year after, Rangers have won the trophy again. That's Haaland, just got another one on Mbappe. And Queen's Park again, although not part of this experiment, it's good to see a Glasgow-based club doing well, and they are continuing to hold on to their top flight status here. Again, Celtic have won the trophy again. Only two points clear of Rangers this time. Another, another narrow, narrow championship win there. Well, Queen's Park climbing up to fifth here. I feel like this is turning into a Queen's Park experiment the way I'm going on here. And the season after, Celtic have held on to the trophy and are now a massive 31 points clear of Rangers, which is a massive, massive achievement. And after this... Rangers have wrestled that trophy back off of Celtic again with a three point margin over them there. Now, again, we'll take a look and see who has won the most recent five years of the Scottish Cup. So, the 27 28 season, and we can see that Aberdeen have beaten Hibs in the final, which is a massive shock that neither Celtic or Rangers won that one. We think it's Celtic beating Rangers. St Mirren beating Celtic, which is a big shock. And then another old firm, Celtic beating Rangers in the 30-31 season. And Celtic again winning it in 31-32. And it is looking like Mbappe is the better player in terms of... I think I have now said this wrong again, and I've called it the wrong trophy name again. Here we are. 27-28 season, Hearts have beaten Rangers. Rangers just keep losing in finals. Celtic then beat Hearts. With Rangers then going on to a clean sweep three in a row here. So Haaland is winning his odd trophy here and there. Let's just hope that he does continue that. And catch up to Mbappe. Hopefully he can do so. Make the end of the experiment a bit more interesting. See who wins. Now player of the year. Mbappe is just dominating this. Mbappe first, Haaland second. Jesse Lingard's jumping up to second here, but every season Mbappe is sweeping the awards here, and then we will then go back to player of the season, again Mbappe winning every single year, and then what about the players player of the year, are any of them giving it to Hound? No, Mbappe just cleaning up, cleaning up house, uh, however, Hound is picking up the odd goal scorer, award 
and then Mbappe wins it the last three years in a row. We have now jumped forward a further 10 years into the future and we are in 2042. Both Haaland and Mbappe have started to dwindle in their careers. Both of them aren't featuring as much for Rangers or Celtic. Haaland more so than Mbappe, but I think this is a good time to end the experiment as they're both just impact subs making the odd five minute cameo here and there. So as we can see in the 32-33 season, Celtic winning the trophy above Rangers again with a reasonable margin. The season after, Rangers winning the trophy by one point, one singular point. Let's see if Celtic lost lost to Rangers 4-1. That was an absolute doing at Ibrox. That will, of course, in the title. The year after, Celtic won it again from Rangers, again with a big margin. For Celtic win again, another, another impressive margin there. Celtic again, another big margin over Rangers, and they look like they are taking off. Again, Celtic winning it, 11 points clear this time. Celtic winning it again, just the six points ahead. Again, Celtic winning it, and I think I think Mbappe and Celtic are now just dominating this. Celtic have won it again, three points clear, but still winning it. And the most recent season, Celtic have won it again by 25 points. So if we look at the past winners here, Celtic have won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row. They are going for that elusive 10 in a row. As you can see, since we started the experiment, it's just Celtic and Rangers have won it each and every time, which is no surprises. We'll now look at the Scottish Cup and just see if it has been as clear cut as the league. No, they've both kind of they've both shared it around. St Mirren have won it in the 33-34 season, but other than that, Rangers and Celtic have shared this trophy. Usually not playing each other in the final. There's only been a couple of times that they've actually played in the final. So they must be knocking each other out in some of the earlier stages. And then I'll not fall into the trap this time. We will now just click down to the Premier Sports Cup. And again, Celtic dominating the Premier Sports Cup. I think since we started this, Rangers won it three times in a row here and once here. With the odd teams sprinkled in. So St Merlin Hearts winning it 36 and 37. Meaning that it was two years when neither old firm side won the trophy. Now we will go back to the Scottish Premiership and just have a look and see who has won the most awards. And Player of the Year, Bappe as we saw, Hound started to win it back off him before Regens started coming in and winning the trophies. Hound managed to get third in the 40-41 season at 40 years old before falling off again. Let's have a look at the players player of the season again. Hallands won one there. But as we can see from 38 39 it's just going to some regens, which you'd expect because Mbappe and Hallands will be in their late thirties, early forties by this point. And let's see if they are still in the overall team of the year, which they will be team of the season rather. Mbappe with 332 goals in 551 games. Haaland with 295 goals in the 476. So I'm going to assume he had an injury at some point because his amount of games dropped off that much. We'll just take a look here. If you look at the stats, he still is very, very good. I mean, I've got a tribute masking on, so you can't see them all. But I mean, look at look at somebody. He's still got a lot of greens here. What we'll do is we'll look at Hallands milestones in those competitions, see what he's won with Rangers. So, runner-up in the two Cups on the Premier League. Runners-up in the 2024 Euros. And then runners-up in the World Cup in the 2026. That's, that is heartbreaking. And as you can see, each season it's just runners-up are champions of numerous, numerous trophies. Norway third place at the 34 World Cup. So Norway have done well, and then, as you can see in the later years, Rangers only getting to one final. You know, they won the Scottish Cup in 35, then two years later, before they were in a final, and won the 37. And then that is how his career has ended. Let's see 
if he's won any major awards this might actually take a long time to go through so I will just scroll through it and if you see anything interesting that is out of the normal Scottish awards just pause it and let me know in the comments if you've spotted something that I've missed he's won a lot of you know, season's best 11 for Rangers, obviously. World Cup best player. World Cup golden boot. Named in the World Cup dream team. Named in the Norway seasonal best 11. I mean, that's not going to be that hard. No offence. But, yeah, just winning all sorts of personal awards. And then we will now take a look at Mbappe. And see how he's going to... I mean, all we can see here is his heading has been 1-4 and four and his jump reach has been 1-4. and four. Not massive. And we'll take a look at the competition milestones for Mbappe. And we'll scroll down here. Look at all these trophies he's won. I thought that was a Champions League winner's medal there, but it's not. It's the European Championships with France in 2024. They then won it in 2028. They won the European South American Super Cup. Sorry, they were runners-up in the European South American Super Cup. Finished third in the 2030 World Cup. Continued to win all sorts of trophies in Scotland. France were the Nations League winners in 33. Fourth place in the 34 World Cup. And as you can see, just trophies galore. Again, we will look at the awards, but... I'll scroll down to the bottom this time at Celtic. And, I mean, we are going to miss something because the team of the week and all that is in here, which is something that will just make it seem a lot more than he actually has in terms of big awards, player of the months, player of the weeks, things like that. So, 2023 FIFA, FIFA, FIFA Pro Player of the Year. He actually won this. Three, well, that's in the 30s. Did he win it before that? He won it in 2023, where he scored an impressive 36 goals and had 13 assists in 48 games. He then went on and won it again in 2030, again in 2031, again in 2032, and he finished third in 2033, and this will be kind of when he starts to slip down as the regens or new gens, whichever you like to call them, start phasing in. Well, he finished second in 2037 at the age of 39. Very, very good. And then from there, it's just all the regens. So, I think that's about it. He's, he's obtained a coaching licence. Amazing news for him. So, I think you'll be able to say that Mbappe has had the better career in Scotland so far when we've looked at domestic trophies and we've looked at their international trophies. Yeah, as you can see here from the 39-40 season, Mbappe just basically was into semi-retirement there. I mean, he would have retired, but because we've given him a contract at PSG in 2050, he will just continue to hang around until then. We'll have a look and see if Haaland has stopped playing as much. I think he's still playing a lot of games. Um, but as you can see, his performance has started to drop off in terms of the amount of goals. He's not scoring the high to mid-20s anymore. One last thing we will check is we will go into the schedules and have a look at European football. I'll have a quick scroll through just to see how they've got on because you know we're looking at 20 seasons here so... If you spot something that you're more interested in, just pause the video and you can have a look, see how they got on. Let me know in the comments if you spot anything really interesting. So, we'll just scroll through each of the seasons here. Europa League knockout, playout round. Champions League knockout, knockout playoff round. Did really well to get out of this group by the looks of it. And then, knocked out in the Champions League phase. Oh yeah, this is this is when it's changed to the massive league format. So if you're not if you're not familiar with this, this massive league of thirty six teams is the way that European competitions are going from 
I'm not entirely sure which season it is. We'll just take a quick look. The 24-25 season is becoming this big, massive league table where you play eight teams within that. Um, bit controversial. It's basically as if the big clubs have got the Super League that they were asking for. And a bit of a better season there. Getting to the Europa League round of 16. Champions League phase... Champions League phase again after going through some qualifiers. Another season of Champions League phase. Europa League phase, as I said, the Europa League is going to the exact same way. Here's the league phase in the Europa League that season. Another Champions League phase. You know, we're going to get to the Champions League phase every single time. And it's not looking like Rangers have done particularly well in Europe. Um, I was maybe hoping that Haaland would dr drag them to, you know, a conference final or the very latter stages of the Europa League. We got to the semi-final here. I, you know, I've just jinxed myself as soon as I said that. Scroll to the next season. They lost 4-1 to Inter Milan. Um, did Haaland score here? Nope. He did not. And, you know, the league phase again. And then the first knockout phase. And that's them there. We will now take a look at Celtic and see if they have done any better in terms of Europe. Fingers crossed Haaland, sorry, Mbappe has been able to give them a bit more hope, but I'm not sure. The Champions League knockout, sorry, knocked out in the group stage, knocked out in the group stage. Last 16 in Europa League. Knockout round of the Champions League. Knockout round again. Quarterfinals of the Europa League. Last 16. Semi-finals of the Europa League. Losing 5-1 to Napoli. So it is looking like, so far, we have semi-finals for both clubs in the Europa League. No thing there. Or there. Again, just getting knocked out. Relatively early, Champions League phase, round 16 again, the knockout playoff, that's a tongue twister, Champions League quarter finals in the 37-38 season, take that, battered in the league phase there, knocked out again, 4 in aggregate in the Champions League knockout playoff, Champions League round of 16, and then again in the knockout playoff. So it doesn't look like Celtic or Rangers have won a European trophy, unfortunately. So there we have it. It looks overall as if Mbappe has had the better career in Scotland than Haaland. But let me know in the comments if you think that that would always be the case as at the moment Celtic are a bigger club than Rangers in terms of financial backing. Um, a lot of people would say squad-wise at the moment. I don't support either of the old firm sides, so I'm not being biased. That's just the way that I see it at the moment. Um, but yeah, give me comments down below if you've enjoyed the experiment. If there's anything that you've spotted while I've been going through it that I have missed. Because, as you can see, when you're simulating 20 seasons, there's a lot of information there. I will have missed something. And also, if you want access to any of the save game points, either... The five years, ten years, and twenty years. Just comment down below, or get me on Twitter, and I will happily send you the save game file so that you can have a look around as well. If you want a bit of a deeper dive, or even if at the one year point where this it started, or the five year point, or any point you are looking to have a play at the save yourself, just let me know. I'll happily send that along to you. But if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, leave a comment. Please subscribe if you aren't already and we will be back soon with another experiment.